have Suprema, like we are doing so many things for sustainability uh, in terms of fashion trends. What inspired you to take on this journey? So, uh, so uh, I started. Uh, I started working uh, in 2005. I've been a journalist. Yes, and uh, in around 2009, I started writing about fashion, and I've been writing about fashion ever since. But uh, you know, when we go to fashion weeks and we are taking our notes and we're talking about, we talk about connections or some new, a new brand that is launching. We are focusing on things like you know the color palettes, the cuts, the silhouettes. Um, we talk about the fabric, but we don't really get into it. We're not asking questions like what is in that fabric, you know. Uh, so we may say that you know oh, uh, such, such, uh, such designer used Georgian Blue, but we are not talking about uh, Georgian Blue, you know, uh, or the quality of the Georgian because there is there is synthetic Georgian and there is that is not so it's a silk based Georgian. So you know. Um, how do we get a follow trend? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So we're not talking about the details. We're also not talking about the people who are making our clothes. So um, I think around 2000, uh, 2009, when I started writing, around then was the first time that I heard the word uh, term organic clothing. And uh, at that point in time, it was basically cotton. Uh, the idea this is cotton. It is grown without fertilizers and pesticides, and uh, there are no dyes in it because it was actually a brand that was doing something for babies. Mm -hmm. So they they went with white. Mm -hmm. This has no dyes, not no chemicals, no. So that thing was there that you know there are no chemicals in our clothes and stuff, but it, there was there was hardly any um, you know awareness in terms of the alternatives. Um, about three, four years later, you know, people started talking more and more about things like um, Sasi. They started talking about, uh, you know, hand woven uh, cotton, which has always been there. It's been there right in front of us. I mean, I think uh, this is, I'm very, <laughs> you know, so she, but, but we're not talking about these things. And uh, I started thinking more and more about it. And I realized, I said, this is something that I should, I would like to focus on. Um, then I was working on a story and I came across these um, staggering figures. Um, I will just give you one example. Um, in India, have you heard of Panipat? Panipat is called the Manchester of India. But Panipat is also called the caste of capital of the world. Waste from all over the world, waste clothing from all over the world comes to Panipat, where it is recycled into uh, mats, blankets, quilts. In a day, they recycle 8 lakh kilograms of textile. 8 lakh kilograms of textile. Um, the fashion industry is also, uh, it's also responsible for a lot of, uh, it's the largest polluter, water polluter. So when I started coming across these facts, let's just say my mind was blown. <laughs> and I said, you know, we can't carry on this way. In 2013, there was this uh, factory in Dhaka that collapsed. It's very famous, it's called the Nana Plaza factory. And um, approximately 1200 people passed that. Now these were all common. All of them, for all your major brands to buy from. Um, and um, when, so when the collapse happened, it turned out that um, these, guys, these workers had been complaining about the tax for a very, very long time. And nothing had been done about it. The reason that nothing was done about it was because the factory owners belong to the money. Um, if you look at, if you pick up any garment, most of our garments, and you flip the tag, even if you're buying in London, you flip the tag and it will say made in India, or made in Pakistan, or made in Bangladesh, or made in India, or made in India. These are the main producers. The reason why this, these clothes are 
tolerate all these countries is because labor is cheap. And our labor laws are not stupid. Um, labor is cheap because there is a dearth of jobs. So people will take in the name. So, which is what these companies are now cashing in on. So they will say that you know we will um, we are giving you a job, but we will not pay you as much as you should be. For uh, if you can buy a T-shirt for three dollars. And when I say I mean three dollars is what two hundred uh, rupees. Two hundred rupees includes the cost of your occupation. It includes the cost uh, the cost of paint, tailoring, cutting, pattern making, designing, um, shipping, packaging. And if you just think of it that way, you know we may we may handle that same thing. But if you start breaking it down, how much is any single person making? So, um, you know, there were all these things that were playing, they were on my mind. Um, and then in 2016, my daughter was born. And um, uh, now, my husband was supposed to be a baby. And I did a three month old baby to Delhi. And that was the first year that I was great, Delhi small. And uh, you know we had to keep all our windows shut. And my mother-in-law went around to take plants in every room. You know that is the first time we got to get purifiers. And uh, my, I, I was so upset. Like it broke my heart. I wanted to take my child. Every day, 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 every she was very, very unwell for, for quite some time. She had trouble, uh, you know, uh, she, she, would have, she had congestion and all of that. And, um, and I realized, I said, you know, we need to do something. To, I need to do something and the only thing I can do is I can write. And um, I had anyway been shifting more and more towards it. To start with, I was covering everything we And uh, I mean, I used to post it on beauty wellness and fashion. And then I realized it all actually comes together. It's a very good fashion to be together. And uh, also, fashion is something I understand. Uh, I thought, please, the company has too many caveats. You need a more, much more sign of the approach to it. You need something understands exactly what is in each product which uh, which I don't have the qualification so I as I said I was to fashion to be something I know how to something I understand as a journalist um, authenticity and authority is very important so um, I decided to study I did a course in sustainable fashion it's an online course. I actually had plans to go uh, to travel to uh, Milan because they had a very, very uh, institute there that had a very comprehensive program that I wanted to study, but then COVID hit. And I had to get my plans. So I just made do with the online courses. I studied this course in sustainable fashion for the business school. Then I studied stuff, but I realized that it's not cutting it because the Indian market is different. And they, these people are only really talking about, you know, the manufacturing in India and the raw materials from India. Nobody is talking about that, that, or, that Indians are also buying clothes. We also wear clothes. And it's strange because India is the world's largest, um, and the largest consumer of uh, apparel and accessories. So if we, are, if we are going to do this, then, uh, you know, we need to talk about this from the point of view of the Indian consumer. We need to keep in mind Indian brands who are doing some fantastic work. You know, we can't just talk about talk about fashion and talk about it talk about it from a, a point of view of uh, you know just just Zara and uh, and H and M and Nike and Adidas and Louis Vuitton and Chanel and leave it at that. What about people who are bringing up, making beautiful clothes in India? You know? So, uh, so I just decided to focus on that. And uh, I started another post there because I need
ability to understand the Indian market better than just what my observations um, and the person sustaining the Indian market and, uh, and then uh, it gave me a better, better understanding I started, then I started selling which I had been doing earlier but I just kind of got a little deeper into it and I started you know uh, figuring out how I wanted wanted this to look it started with you know okay maybe maybe I'll uh, you know start my own blog but then I said this needs to be bigger than a blog it needs to reach more people it needs to be impactful so then I, I called a friend of mine who I worked with on multiple projects and I said listen please help me design like you know a website a proper website which has sections like you have in a magazine okay because I've been a magazine industry, right? so my <laughs> thing is like, yes. Yeah. So I said, sir, I worked, um, I started my journey without her. Okay. I worked with Chai Vidya, I worked with Pramina, I, um, I worked with uh, Women's Health Prevention. Okay. I've also written the book, Harvest Visa, and the last book, yes. So, uh, and my last full time, I uh, was a magazine, I was the deputy editor of the so, uh, you know, that's how I have yeah. worked. So, you must be the creative passion is very much there. Yes, so I said, this is what I wanted to do. And, and then I started building a routine. Okay. I, I, you know, before we could work on uh, even a revenue model, I said, I'm thinking because I need this to work like that. Okay. This needs to be something that is functioning. They need to be able to know what they're doing. And they need to be more passionate about the cause. So, uh, so we are in the diary in the Okay. Um, I have, there is a design team. Uh, the editorial team is me plus another girl. Um, she is, she is with, she's been with me. Like, she was my first proper <coughs> I have another army wife who handles all our, uh, you know, the uh, operations and the business side of it. Design team and we have we have this is an all women's team. So we have one token male member who helps us with the technical side of it. So so yes, uh, and uh, tomorrow we are also launching our uh, podcast. So we've just got one more another woman on our team. So so we will uh, got uh, so there is a lot happening on that because. Uh, you know, I I also believe that um, the focus of a, a, a business or an enterprise cannot be to make money. True. That's true. Money, if you are doing a good job, money will come. Your focus needs to be to do things well, to do your own work. Yes. You really And. Um, uh, the, this, uh, so one of my uh, team who the one who handles my operations is also an army wife. So you know we've uh, and she's always uh, challenging. So we you know we've got a very we've got an eclectic mix of people. So, <laughs> so, so yes, so that is uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much.